Hey, shalom, shalom. This is Pastor John Tatum. I'm here spending a little time with Prince Sar Amiel. And we're here, and we're just glad it's a beautiful day we have here in the city of Chicago, Illinois. That's right. We're having a good day. How you doing, Prince? Wonderful. Wonderful. Doing super. Hallelujah. How are you? Man, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great, encouraged, inspired, man. And Hey, man, I'm glad to that we're headed out to this meeting. This meeting, I believe, is very important and very significant what we're doing. But uh, while we're rolling out that way, man, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, us as the people of the book and uh, this whole idea that we're supposed to be staying in America, man. It's off the chain, the, the kind of backlash that I'm receiving just because I'm telling people the truth that it's time to build our own world and it's time for us to pack up, brother, because... This place called America is going down, and uh, if we ain't, don't uh, allow our feet to uh, to be planted in another ground and make some connections and relationships around the world, then uh, we're going to be stuck in a place that's not ultimately going to be good for us. So talk a little bit about, uh, you know, 1857. I don't think a lot of people know what 1857 is all about. Was the landmark case of the Dred Scott decision, and it was really based upon uh, a runaway slave who thought that he was free, and when he went to another state, and uh, they told him he had to go back uh, to his slave master. Wow! And in that context, there the Slaves were never really freed. Uh, yeah, what about them amendments, to, man? The 13, 14, 15? Come on. Well, the reason why they, they don't really apply to us is because we're not citizens. We're not citizens. We're not citizens. I thought I was an American citizen. I went to college, man. I graduated, man. Did you tell me? Well, they'll take, they'll take your money and get you <laughs> assimilate their knowledge. Oh, you know man. They have every... Uh, have every reason to uh, support you into going to their school systems because their school systems are indoctrinational uh, situations where you are are uh, prodded to and and, and I'm gonna say this you're prodded to stand and pledge allegiance to yeah. the, of the United States of America. Man, I did that every day when I was a little little boy. Yeah. My father used to make me do it when the, the television used to go off with the Star Bangle Banner. <laughs> so my father used to make me get up standing. You, you tell her your car. age, man. You're going back that far. It's all right. Actually, TV used to go off. <laughs> TV used to go off with the Star Spangled Banner. And so everything was designed once they gave us the perception or the deception that we were we were free, we would behave ourselves. Ah. So we wouldn't be so much as a revolutionary fervor because it made it look like that we were being included in the American idea. Right. And uh, many of our people fell for it. Should we stay here or what? Should we? Well, should, what, what are we supposed to be doing, man? For most people, when you tell them they, got, they have to go somewhere, they'll tell you they don't know any other land than this because they don't have a a uh, historical context for which to come from. Right. The best that they can do is say that they came from Africa. That might not necessarily be true, especially with the uh, the uh, DNA uh, investigation and all of that and find out that people come. They might think they come from Africa, but they might have came from Ukraine or something. Right. Because it's the whole earth and the fullness thereof. Institutional racism changed everything. Uh, racism based on color changed everything. And now you contextualize by color, so uh, it's easy to say that we don't like them people. And you can tell the people we don't like based on the color. If they're that color, we don't like them. And that's what we've been under for the last uh, 1,400 uh, 400 years, is that we've been begging to be a part of the slave master's world. So, what do you do 
with a slave who won't run away. Yeah. I mean, literally run away. That's you can run, a, you run to another county. <laughs> you can run to another state. But he won't run up out of the country. Right, right. So what do you do with a slave like that? Well, you abuse them, you abuse them, you educate them, you do whatever, because they're not going to go anywhere. Wow. So you make them functionaries, and, and they become uh, <coughs> utility persons for the continued construction of the world that is really their jail. Wow. They're in prison there. So a lot of times when you tell people, you know, we need to get up out of here. They flex because they'll say, you know, we don't know any other place. Well, you don't know any other place because you don't want to know any other place. Right. But a lot of these people who are in America came from other places, and you ask them where they come from, they, they'll say, I come from Germany, I come from France, I come from this, I come from that. You ask the African American. Even the British person tell you come from Britain. Right. You know? <laughs> All these guys who came over and fought the war, you know, they'll tell you they came from somewhere. If you get to the African American, you say, well, I don't know any other land. Now, that's we got to take a, a look at this thing because so many moving parts yeah. to the historical reality. Because uh, it's, in the uh, scripture, it said that the that, that, that Satan. Devil would seek to change times and laws. Right. So that means deception would be the order of the day. So we uh, have been investigating and investigating and investigating in this, in this day and time. Information is everywhere. Yeah. He said people should run to and fro. Knowledge shall increase. And people will go back to their own vine and fig tree. Yeah. And that simply means that Everybody's going to recognize their uh, their sovereignty, their belonging, uh, their tribes, their associations, all of that, uh, for the express purpose of being centered in a time when the world in a time when the world is in flux, and deception has destabilized every aspect of life. Yeah, and so. When you tell somebody, you know, they need to go somewhere, there are all these excuses. And so what we wind up at least is saying, at least find you an alternative. And, and they have. You, even if you don't believe us. Yeah. Then just find an alternative. So they go to the country, they yeah. build little things out yeah. there, the southern part of it. Yeah, do something. You can go anywhere on the planet. Right. Just in case we're right. <laughs> yes. so we left 50 years ago because we knew it was right 50 years ago. We right. left up out of America. And as a result of that, we have an alternative. But not only do we have an alternative, we have an alternative world. We wound up constructing a better world for ourselves. Because uh, even up until this day, Europeans are still saying that uh, we are not uh, a people. So what is an African American? Right. What is an American? Because even if a person says he's an American, say where you come from. Okay. So now, the reason why I'm laying it out like that is because before, prior to 1492, Prior to 1492, the people that so-called black, mm -hmm. Negro, we were already here. And we were already functioning uh, because the world wasn't white yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's hard to, to even wrap your mind around, what do you mean the world wasn't white yet? <laughs> and the thing was, you got to go back to the contemporary history, if we go back to 1492, you see who came across in the boats and all of that. But that's why I'm saying so many moving parts because some of the people that came across in the boats were what they call mulatto Jews. Right. And the mulatto Jews were, uh, in, the er in the earlier days, they were called the Hellenized Jew. Changed to mulatto Jew. Uh, 
at some particular point uh, as a designation of uh, the reality of when we had to leave in 70 AD out of uh, the Holy Land, uh, we, uh, many of us went into what you call Africa today. We went west, right? Right. But they were a whole bunch of Israelites that went east and went into the Euro lands. Yeah. And most of them were business people who weren't about to be run out of uh, out of the Holy Land uh, and leave their livelihood because they already had relationships with nations and, and traders from different parts of the world and they weren't about to scuttle that. Yeah. And so some of them, everybody didn't leave. And some of them uh, migrated into the Euro lands, Germany, France, all of those places like that. Uh, and one, but one particular point in time, they may have, had, may have even had, a, had a other names because it said that Satan would seek to change times and laws and he didn't change so much stuff. We uncovering stuff every day that he didn't lie about. Compare that with um, what the what the, uh, the 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 pilgrims when they came over here and wanted a new world and uh, the manifest destiny and and bring your time that piece a little bit. Well, the, one of the main reasons why uh, Europeans left Europe is because they didn't like the political situation, right. and they felt that they wanted to go to another land and establish uh, a world for themselves. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? A novelty idea. <laughs> <laughs> and so they came here under what you call manifest destiny. That means that they created their own world. Mm. That's simply what that means. So they weren't no smarter than us. They weren't any stronger than us. Uh, but they had a plan. They had an agenda. And people was already here. People were already here. Okay. And so when they came here, you know, they called these guys the Indians because uh, people thought that they was landing in India. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, and so I use the terminology uh, loosely because you're actually supposed to be called by the name of the tribes. Yeah. But just for uh, relativity's sake, the Indians coined this phrase and said the white man speak with four tongues. Yeah. Because he just lied at the drop of a hat. Now, in deference uh, to some people who weren't part of the deception, there were people who came along on the boat who thought that they were coming to this uh, to this place that was going to be that the kingdom of God was going to uh, be constructed from and you go back to to uh, Saint Germain and all of the, the uh, prophets even the European prophets who prophesied that coming to America would start the development of this new world right because I looked up the word United States right. or America and it means in Hebrew covenant lands right, right. yeah so we were not the only one. See, when, when you get back past the, the racism based upon color, you find out that you could be in any kind of configuration. I mean, I mean your family could be mixed, whatever, whatever, because it wasn't, our lives weren't constructed along, along racial lines. So uh, you can go all the way back to the 8th and 9th century when the Czars uh, and the, uh, the Ashkenazis and all that, they had to have a proximity to us in the sense that uh, they were close enough to want to be us. Yes, sir. That's a point nobody, sh say that again. That's a point nobody stresses that the, that the Khazarians 
decided to have their whole empire yeah. convert to what we were doing already. To what we were doing already because what we were doing was so profound. They not only wanted it, but they wanted to be us. <laughs> Off the chain. Which, you know, it, it, it's not a bad thing if you're going to give credit where credit is due and, and pay homage right. <laughs> sent to the the original right right they went off into a whole nother direction and the reason why you can't tell uh jewish people that they they are not necessarily the real people like that is because they after two or three generations they stopped using the word conversion yeah wow so they didn't want to say they were converted jews converted or they converted to judaism after a while, they just were saying, we're Judah. We're the, the, uh, the ancient Israelites. Whatever, whatever names are connected to that, they stopped using the, the context of conversion. Now, in your 50 years of being over there, have um, you got confirmation, or not confirmation, but have the people or had conversations with people that have confirmed who we are as the people? Have you had all conversations? The time, and but all the time. All the time. We've been there 50 years. Now, when we first went, based upon being angry, black people coming out of America, <laughs> we didn't want to hear what nobody had to say. Right. Which, uh, in some shape or fashion, you know, is, is a necessary thing because we were a closed uh, community. Yeah. And we viewed everybody, all the Europeans outside of our community, we viewed them uh, not in a good light. I got you. Not understanding, because, you know, say when we were children, we acted as children. When we uh, looked in the mirror one day, we were, weren't children anymore. So yeah. we had to come to terms with the fact that everybody wasn't our enemy. Got you. Though we treated them like that. I understand. But, you know, it's a process of growth and development. And what we found out is that there were a lot of people waiting for us to show up wow. in the Holy Land. Uh, and even when you talk about uh, what they call Africa, you're talking about the Ashante, the Igbo, and all of these major tribes, they trace their spiritual lineage back to the Holy Lands. Because at one time, what the Vatican is to the European world is what the Holy Lands were to the whole world. Mm, mm, mm. You follow me? Yeah. And so, just bringing it back to uh, how we started out, because we don't know these things, because we don't know that we are the people, we wind up falling for anything because we just have this yearning uh, to be accepted. Yeah. We go back to the uh, to the shooting at the church last year. A little white guy came to the church and shot up oh, yeah. so many people. Um, and I did I did a treatment on that because I was saying now how could this angry white guy who's distinctly look distinctly different than everybody else and when you look at the at, at the film at the video he had no smile on his face, no nothing the whole time. Mm -hmm. So he was stoic the whole time. Festering, it's just sitting there. Now, how is it that the people couldn't feel that? Right, discern that. And how is it that uh, they didn't question? Well, the reason why was because we want white people to want to be with us so bad that we'll overlook the fourth tongue. Ooh wee! And in this case, the guy had a forked mind. Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he was sitting there seething the whole time, waiting for waiting for the, him to size himself up where he can go on and do what he had to do. Now, he, now uh, contrary to popular belief, he didn't do that by himself. He had been prodded. But more importantly, he had been prodded by this particular culture that says that we are not people. Yeah. 
So he didn't have any rights he had to expect. He, he, he didn't know, uh, I mean, that he had to respect. I mean, he didn't respect our space. No, he didn't yeah. respect the spirituality. He didn't respect our God or whatever. But the need for black people to want to be included, to want to be a part of this world, to want Europeans to like them is the reason why he was able to sit in there that whole time. Wow. Because they thinking he's really there because he wants to be and maybe we can convert him. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that's the that was the Christian underpinning, you know, that, you know, you put your heart out to everybody and you, and, uh, you accept everybody when they come, when they walk through the door. Now, you know, you can't accept everybody when you walk That's through true. the door. And, and some of these churches, they got security now. Yeah. You know, when. Since uh, that event, boy, I don't even. Yeah. 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 Even and, more. And so, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and so we look at this reality that we have no rights that a white man has to respect. Um, Europeans operate like that. And I'm not saying that it's everybody, but the most significant people <laughs> who are part of the decision-making process, they, when they talk about institutional racism, they created the institution with the racism in it. <laughs> it does something else. So it ain't like the institution created itself. Yeah, right. It ain't like the institution created itself. Yeah. Men construct worlds. Men create institutions. And so um, what we've got to come to terms with is when somebody says that you need to leave, at least give it some ear. Yeah. And, and look for some more information yeah. so that you can uh, at least at some point have a have a, uh, a uh, what you what you would call a um, an informed uh, objection yeah you yeah. know but you just can't object <laughs> without information that's true you know at that point you're just being emotional right and I'm saying we got to stop being an emotional people led by emotions I remember that uh, um George Clinton, who's the head of Parliament Funkadelic. Oh, yeah. He said at one point, he had an album called America Eats Its Young. And uh, there was a lyric on there where he said, they're pimping their instincts until their ability to think was amputated. Wow. So the instinct of self-preservation, the instinct of inherent power and all those things yeah. have been erased. So we go for anything and I'm not saying it's everybody but it's enough of us. We go for anything we get anything and, it, and, and, and the thing is that if a white guy says it uh, it's substantiated. If a black guy says it you got to go to a white guy to find out whether the black guy is right. Yeah, right. that's true. So, that's true. in essence um, on this beautiful, wonderful day, all the pastor is trying to uh, help his people, you, understand is that we have to prepare because this world's not getting any better. Correct. And you know it's not getting any better. And if you're dealing with the truth, uh, it can't get better until it gets worse. And um, so the scripture said, for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. It don't say everybody hear and everybody see. Well, we know that. For those who can hear and those who can, can hear what the pastor is saying and those who can see it in their minds. You got to listen to the pastor because the pastor is, is a guiding angel and has been created on this planet to help not just black people but to help the world heal itself and so all of these videos and all of this information that we're putting out there and that he's sharing with you every day is to draw you a picture a picture that if we don't like the world we live in we gotta change it we gotta build a new one build a new one fix it change it 
Hallelujah. So I appreciate you. Thanks, I appreciate man. you, Prince. Thanks for allowing me to spend a little time with you, man. It was a nice little ride out here. We're at our destination. So we say shalom, shalom, saints. Shalom, shalom, kaksameach. Yeah, getting ready for Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Hallelujah. Bless y'all.